webinar today. Before we start, uh, some um, important things to remember, like using the Google Chrome will help, and the session will be also recorded. Um, so you can listen to this uh, later. And um, this is the title of our webinar. It's actually day two. We have day, uh, uh, part one yesterday, and today we continue with the presentation of the open virtual mobility project. And I'm very happy that my colleagues from the project are here with me. We will be presenting different parts of the project. And uh, first of all, let me introduce Gemma Tour from um, Spain, who is uh, the organizer of this event. This is our last multiplier event in the project. And Gemma can just say hi from, <laughs> <laughs> from Ibiza. And from the office again. So from very the, happy to meet you here. Great. Thank you for organizing thank and thank you to Edato also for uh, supporting this um, event and doing this with us. So here is the program for today. We have a pretty um, packed agenda, so we have to keep the time. Um, after the welcome, we have different um, outputs that we will be presenting, different outputs from the project, and we have planned 15 minutes per uh, pr presentation, and this includes the questions. So to everybody participating, uh, please use the um, question uh, mark, like in the chat on the right hand side at the bottom, you have two signs or two icons. One is a uh, like a bubble, a speech bubble, or the other one is a question. If you use the question mark to write your question, we will be able to display uh, the questions later on and, um, and read them on the screen. Okay, so I guess that's all for uh, for organization. Ah, one more uh, thing at the end of today. So we are planning until, we're planning to finish at 12.30. And in the last time slot, we will present a call for papers for our special issue that will be dedicated to open virtual mobility. And uh, Gemma Tour will present this um, call for papers. So uh, I'm very happy that we have all this program and we will start um, now with a, uh, uh, with my presentation and there are the slides. So this is the project team. Actually, this picture was taken at the very beginning at the first meeting of our project in Berlin. And um, an open virtual mobility project is a Erasmus Plus strategic partnership for, um, oh, there are the slides back, the slides are back, for um, innovation in higher education. And it's dedicated to open opening or to, um, yeah, to opening virtual mobility. But before we actually uh, like it, jump into the project and, and introduce all the different things that we have been working on, I would like to take a step back and um, uh, basically uh, touch upon some of the issues that we are facing today. Like we see here, the problems with nationalism, populism, and the right wing and all the people protesting in the streets. And also, of course, the sad events of the last days where we have also had many protests in the streets and the problems of xenophobia, racism and violence have been unfortunately growing in our society. So I think when, once we meet here and discuss virtual mobility and mobility in academic um, context, I think it's really important that we keep this in mind that all these things that are happening in the world are also something that we as educators have to take care of and also be responsible for in our um, teaching, in our contacts with other people and in, in um, forging connections and in making this world or contributing to making this world a little bit more tolerant, open, and um, hopefully also using the digital media that we have today to uh, bridge to other cultures to other societies and connect with people from around the world. And I think that this uh, is a great potential of mobility in general, but also uh, for digital or uh, virtual mobility, especially now um, in the times of um, COVID, for example. So um, I think it's important to keep in mind that, you know, below or beyond all these different discussions that we have when we talk about virtual mobility or mobility programs, when we discuss the uh, um, different, um, the recognition of a CTS or, uh, you know, beyond the learning agreement that we have between 
um, institutions, I think what really the important level or dimension of it all is, is that virtual mobility and mobility in general helps to build understanding and bonds between people in different countries and cultures. And that I think that's the most important thing to remember when we engage in all these different international exchanges. And so um, I think everybody has to ask themselves how we can contribute to actually make this happen uh, in all our small projects that we are engaged in. So of course, physical mobility uh, is great. And um, you know it's all beyond the uh, formal participation on, in the courses and uh, beyond the learning that we always focus on in our projects. It's also about humans coming together and learning each other and spending time together. And this is great. And this can be, of course, best done with a physical mobility. But nevertheless, there are times like today, like the COVID times, when the, the online uh, connection is the only way actually to, uh, to get in touch with people from around the world because we cannot travel. And this um, issue of um, not be, of people not always being able to travel for physical mobility for different reasons, not only because of pandemia, but also for politi political reasons, economic reasons, or family reasons, has been also the guiding thought for um, virtual mobility, taking on and uh, adding a new value to uh, academic mobility. And like George uh, uh, Ubach from Adatu said yesterday, uh, virtual mobility is not the second best, but it has its own value. And we also believe in this, that it is a simply a, a different type of um, communication, collaboration when using digital media and um, it has its own value in how we um, create those new forms of collaboration and communication online <laughs> in intercultural settings. Um, so saying uh, all that said, I'm happy to um, present to you and I'm happy that my colleagues will present to you our little contribution that we have hopefully uh, done with our project open virtual mobility to internalization and um, uh, bringing people together. Of course, we as a partnership of nine different universities and university networks have also come together and got to know each other and have worked together, got to know different cultures, different ways of and perspectives on working. And I think that's true for any international project, which is some kind of mobility too, right? So we also, um, have this curriculum, which may be maybe informal curriculum, but we also grow as professionals through all those international exchanges and uh, collaborations. So here you see the different logos of our um, partner uh, organizations. Um, Boyd University is the coordinator. We have University of Roma Tre, uh, University um, uh, Polytechnical University from Timisoara, University of the Balearic Islands, um, Catholic University in Leuven, Edatu, uh, Chineka, uh, Open University in the Netherlands, Onash, UNEED, and the European Distance and E-Learning Network as an associated partner. And um, one of the main outcomes of our project, what we have been working on for the three years, is the Open Learning Hub, which will be presented today in more detail. But if you are interested, there is a link already. I'm going to put this into a chat or maybe somebody from our uh, partnership could do this. If you are interested, you can already explore parallel to this. And um, this will be uh, presented, like I said, in more detail in a minute. And now we were going to jump into the presentations and we will uh, start with output one. So here you can see basically a, a visualization of the different outputs, seven outputs that we have been working on together and we will present them one by one so you have a good overview of what is um, what we have developed. Thank you so much. And I'm happy that uh, Olga and Kamakshi are going to present now um, the output one, which is the competency framework. Hello, I just tested my, I'm Olga Kirsova. I just tested my, soft, uh, my software and Kamakshi will start. And I will yes, start. thank you, Olga. 
Uh, so thank you, Ilona, for that wonderful presentation and also bringing back the, the context of uh, uh, virtual mobility and mobility on its own um, in, in the current situation. Uh, I think we, we learned a lot during this project and I hope to share a little bit about this uh, in this presentation. Um, so uh, together with Olga, uh, we have been working on uh, open VM learner skills. Um, so, um, at the beginning of this project, or actually during the conceptualization of the project, uh, we were considering what, why, you know, what do we want to get out of this uh, project, uh, also on a more theoretical side. Um, and, and what we saw was that you had a lot of interesting learning environments uh, where they explored this international context and supported by uh, digital tools, uh, but they were very complex and you had a lot of, you know, very different diverse designs that, that supported this kind of learning. Uh, and you always saw that the people who are uh, engaged in it always uh, are so excited and, and uh, under, well, gain a lot of value, learning value from, from these contexts. But at the same time, we also saw that the, we didn't really have the terminology, the words to describe the differences in the design uh, and the experiences. Um, and, and therefore we could not really grasp uh, why they're learning, you know, why, why is this setting important? We, we see that they learn, we experience that they learn, uh, but we cannot describe it. And related to that, then we also had very little ways of of uh, discussing um, different designs or learning outcomes, measuring these uh, learning outcomes, and then actively supporting uh, learning outcomes. Um, so, so we hoped in this project we could um, make some way to um, to support this uh, and understand these environments better. Uh, so then I will. I think pass on to Olga, who will explain a little bit more about uh, what we uh, what we did uh, on this theoretical side. Uh, thank you, Kamakshi. Uh, the important thing is that we combine two two uh, uh, great uh, and important and big concepts: uh, uh, virtual mobility, uh, which was uh, presented, discussed, and also. Um, elaborated upon yesterday in a very uh, nice way and uh, the the concept of open education so what are the skills that learners uh, gain from opening uh, virtual mobility from learning uh, from virtual mobility uh, they uh, undertake uh, to have an answer to this question uh, we applied a, a methodology uh, which is uh, the name of it is Group Concept Mapping uh, Methodology. It uh, has been developed for already several decades uh, and it can be uh, very nicely described. Uh, it is very nicely described by its author, uh, Bill Trochim, as creating a stakeholder authored uh, visual geography of ideas. So what we did, uh, we followed this uh, um, method we um, asked experts on both virtual mobility and open education first from within our project you already saw uh, a picture of the presenters uh, of, of members of this project and they are also now uh, uh, in in a picture uh, we asked them to uh, go to their networks and uh, collect uh, just uh, gather um, experts in the field. Uh, so through uh, an online tool, uh, Concept Systems, we um, reached out to the experts and around 50 experts uh, contributed, shared their ideas on, on what learner uh, skills uh, they uh, find important uh, in uh, open virtual mobility. They also, um, this. Uh, sorted and grouped uh, ideas, they evaluated these ideas, giving them uh, rating, and then uh, the system helped us with the analysis. Um, in the middle of, of um, uh, the, the visual, uh, now you see um, 
that a lot of discussion took place. So this discussion mm -hmm. was with the tool and also uh, in a few meetings, including an international conference, Global, where we uh, again uh, discussed uh, the re visual representations of the model with the uh, experts. Uh, and as a result, we uh, constructed or the system helped us construct uh, and validate a uh, model of open virtual mobility learner skills, which you, we present, which I present now. You see it on the screen. The important thing is that uh, this model, and I'm trying to switch the next slide. Yes, now you see there are two actually major parts in it. Uh, the learner skills or characteristics that can be defined as learner skills and competences, and also um, uh, characteristics of uh, that are connected with the study. So requirements for open mobility, uh, virtual mobility uh, to take place. Uh, focusing on the learner skills, I'll illustrate them with several slides and I hope it will run smoothly. Uh, intercultural skills, um, also the definition itself is also con is constructed uh, based on, on the ideas of the experts. So it really describes what the expert of the field thinks, uh, considers important in uh, skills that uh, virtual mobility um, helps to develop intercultural skills and attitude uh, an absolute number one uh, but also uh, media uh, and digital literacy and maybe for my apology if it doesn't work that smoothly um, I I am I'm sorry that uh, moving through the presentation is a bit uh, difficult. Active uh, self-regulated learner skills, also an important part of the uh, whole uh, uh, skills picture and of course, autonomy driven learning. Uh, if um, we consider all these skills, then we can say that in most virtual mobility uh, examples that also examples that that we heard of uh, and we saw yesterday uh, these skills are part of it although some other things uh, are put as as learning objectives of the learning experience it, itself so this is something that is developed together with the main related skills and competences, uh, but uh, it is not the uh, the crucial component of the design. To help tackle this issue uh, within the Open VM project, a series of um, learning uh, activities were developed as mini MOOCs. Uh, you will uh, hear about them. Uh, later in in this presentation, but uh, just to develop these MOOCs, we took uh, uh, the uh, conceptual model of uh, OpenVM uh, skills um, as a starter, as a starting point. Uh, uh, now you also see that uh, analyzing uh, the uh, the model, we could distinguish between um, more. Oh no. I lost it. Uh, I'll, I'll still uh, keep on talking. Uh, oh, uh, we, yes. we, we saw that uh, we could support. Oh, we we support in the project. We supported um, um, skills development with the help of the uh, um, uh, MOOCs. Uh, there were also. Um, credentials developed within the project. You will also uh, hear about it later. And uh, a very most important thing is that we proceed to developing uh, connections between um, regular virtual mo mobility activities, which can uh, have a variety of learning objectives and uh, the open PM skills uh, to illustrate that 
I need to move to, to this slide with the question marks. So uh, open VM skills are uh, integrated in different uh, virtual mobility initiatives in a variety of ways. So what this variety is and uh, how uh, uh, open uh, VM skills are integrated in, uh, in it is uh, the point of further studies. Yes, that, thank you, Olga. Uh, I just wanted to um, come back to uh, one small thing. So the, the whole uh, process uh, that Olga described in doing this group concept maps uh, mapping study, uh, we have described it in more detail in, in the output that you can find on our uh, on the OpenVM website, but also in, in our um, article uh, that uh, where we kind of also go into, uh, you know, the situation of uh, open virtual mobility and uh, the setting uh, um, or the, the process that we followed, uh, including the discussions that I'll have mentioned on describing these, uh, these different skills. Uh, I also wanted to just uh, pick up on what Olga said about uh, yes, in, in, in this project, we have developed these uh, MOOCs, which, which offer um, some further, um, you know, development of, of these uh, learner skills. Uh, but, and also we, uh, this was taken up by our colleagues uh, who are working on uh, the open badges, uh, which, which kind of create, uh, uh, you know, allows um, some credentialing which, which is on a skill level rather than uh, these this, uh, unique environments in which the skill development takes place. And therefore, we, we hope we contributed to um, a way to, to look at these complex environments um, in a way that, that, that supports the learning and, and the, the actual skill development in this context rather than these unique, uh, only considering these unique settings on their own. Um, I uh, just also, before moving on to the questions, I wanted to um, yeah, uh, reflect a little bit on what, what we can now do since we have these uh, learner skills described. Um, so one of the things that we're exploring and we'll hope you know, we'll um, add to uh, towards the end of the project is uh, looking at OpenVM designs through this perspective of learner skills and trying to um, become more nuanced in, in describing uh, how, design, how the design of these uh, environments supports particular aspects of these learner skills. Uh, but some things that we also learned during the way is that uh, is that, yeah, we can go a lot of uh, different directions here. Uh, for example, on the measurements of these learner skills, there is a lot of, uh, there's not yet so much research. Some of them are more described than others. And also uh, we see that the, um, the different learner skills can support or inhibit each other. So uh, there's certainly more scope to reflect on, you know, what, what are best practices in design Kamaxi, we cannot we cannot hear you. Can you hear? You can hear me, but we cannot hear you. Your your sound is 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 gone. Maybe you there's no sound. No, no sound. I don't know if Fena can help. No sound, no. <laughs> And if you use, if you don't use, great. If you don't use the headset, maybe because there was a funny sound, and then it, and then you were, and we can't hear you anymore. Exactly, <laughs> some kind of buzz, and the sound disappeared. I don't know. Maybe Olga could, could finish because we have four more minutes. Uh, 
Hello, I, I see that I can use my camera. I hope you hear me, but uh, I cannot, cannot use my... Uh, oh. Hello? Does it work now? It works now. It works now. I'm actually it works. Ah, okay. Very good. Uh, so I, I actually, yeah, we, we can move on to the questions. I saw some um, interesting questions about... Um, Uh, from Eliana. Okay. Yeah, so we have we have a few questions from Eliana. Eliana, thank you for uh, for your questions. And oh, sorry, I played the wrong one. Eliana was asking. Hello. Um, I'm I'm not sure which possibility, uh, um, Eliana. Um, how do you... um, I, I think you mean how, how do partners find each other uh, for open VM um, activities? Uh, well, I, I think there are several ways that in this project we, we are uh, trying to support this. So uh, one of the ways is through the um, Open Virtual Mobility Hub. Um, there we will have uh, some more insight into yeah, which universities are uh, in collaboration around uh, virtual mobility. Um, and how do we... Um, well, uh, one of the activities that we were suggest thinking of is to use these uh, learner skills actually as a starting point to de design uh, new new activities as well. Um, okay. Yes, so and there is one more question from Eliana. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so as I understand it, so we are already doing MOOCs at our institution, but they're not yet part of the course catalog. So I'm wondering how other universities are planning this, uh, these MOOCs. Um, I think that's an interesting question as well, because um, so the, the whole concept of open VM is that the virtual uh, mobility has actually been thrown wide open, let's say, through the availability of MOOCs. Um, and these MOOCs are yeah, hosted in different organizations. And I think one of the big thing, uh, you know, the progress that I hope we will see in the coming years is that um, universities start looking at these MOOCs as a valuable addition to whatever they are, uh, their own pro uh, programs and curricula. Um, um, I think that's uh, um, a way in which uh, they can um, support, uh, include these, these MOOCs uh, or, or use them to the best uh, benefit and starting from the initiative of the student. Um, but I think that it's more uh, an organizational uh, or institutional discussion that, that has to um, develop there. Um, do we have time? Maybe this is uh, uh, last, so, last quick answer. <laughs> last quick, quick answer. Yes. Would blended mobility become a standard, and is there anything obligatory already? Well, I, I can say, as far as uh, the K Leuven is concerned, um, we are uh, l looking at blended uh, mobility more and more as a standard. I think, especially in this context of uh, COVID nineteen, um, where next year we're already thinking about uh, a, a blend uh, blended way of programming our usual uh, curricula uh, and so there's a big effort here uh, on on rethinking um, how we work uh, just 
normal work, not even the international side of it. Uh, so I think it will become more and more of a standard. And I hope, uh, as I think you discussed yesterday, the value of uh, the virtual mobility is also understood uh, more as, as a unique um, aspect of its, uh, of its own. Yeah. So thank you. Okay. Thank you for the question. Great. Thank you for the questions. And thank you all again, Kamakshi. And we move on with the second presentation about the Learning Hub. And uh, I believe it's going to be Diana and the team presenting. I'm not quite sure who is going to present. Hello, everybody. It's me. Can Hi, you... Diana. Great. Yes. Good. Good. You so you, you can hear me and you can see me. That's that's very Perfect. good. Perfect. So I will start speaking about the online presence of our project, uh, the Open Virtual Mobility Learning Hub, and uh, what we have done in the hub in the last uh, almost two years uh, now. So the first thing is our online presence. And for this, I would like to, to watch, to let you see, because I wanted to be sure that everything is working fine. So I prepared the video about this. And let's start uh, seeing this video first. The Open Virtual Mobility Project has its website at the address of openvirtualmobility.eu. Here you will be able to find information about our project, about the resources and the results, the publication and the events, including the social media feeds. Partially, the website is also in all the partner languages, social media feeds. At the About and at the Project Summary, you will be able to find also our final brochure, which is a document which encompasses all the results uh, in a more easy to use information and easy to access. You will be able to download this and use it with your institutions to build up open virtual mobilities to identify what you can do and how you can access our co courses and the virtual mobility learning hub. At the output, you will be able to find all the information regarding the framework and guidelines of the open virtual mobilities, the information about the open virtual mobility learning hub, about the competencies directory and the learning group formation tool, and also about the e-assessment concept. The Open Virtual Mobility has been able to build up 24 credentials, uh, which are open badges, which we created for our courses and which you can gain through our, uh, if you join our project into the learning hub. You will be able also to learn something more about the other resources and courses about virtual mobility, and you will be able to see our policy for quality and sustainability. You will be able to find all of our publications and information about where we published the, the research which we have done into this project. And also you will be able to see all of our events and how you could join them and as some are virtual events. You will have access also to the open educational resources which we had identified in other projects or in other tools and in other courses. And you will be able to see quite a lot of them. The most important bit are the open credentials, which are the open badges which we created with our project partner Bastel, which are 24 badges in all the eight courses at three le different levels. But to be able to access the courses, you will need to go to the Open Virtual Mobility Learning Hub, which is also through this link, which is very visible. <music> Okay, okay, so now moving back to the slides. Um, this uh, is this one. No, uh, hold on a second. Uh, Fena, can you help me? Thank you. <laughs> okay, so something about the Open Virtual Mobility Learning Hub. Uh, we had quite a lot of uh, challenges to face when we built up the Open Virtual Mobility Learning Hub because it was thought to be as a personal learning environment with uh, different social software, with abilities for mobile learning, with common working and collaboration space, and a lot of self-assessment and also the digital credentials which you've seen that I, I just mentioned. 
So for this, uh, we built up uh, some structures. Obviously, uh, we split the hub into different areas based on our user case scenarios. And these are the main areas, which is the skills, the virtual mobility assessment, the open credentials, the badges, obviously the content, the activities which you can do into the open virtual mobility learning hub, and also the market, which is also related to a question which was raised here, how people can find out about other virtual mobility and how other universities can join us. So the market is the first place where you can go and see something about this. And obviously, the data which we are uh, collecting and having from this uh, the open virtual mobility learning hub. We have built up uh, the specification based on the functional diagram and also into the um, user cases. And we had several user cases which were based on, on students, uh, which you can see here, I will go very fast over this, and also over teacher or partner institutions, which have been quite important uh, for us because we wanted to be able to provide also teachers and professors from different universities with a tool where they can build up virtual mobilities. The Open Virtual Mobility Learning Hub is Moodle-based, but it has a lot of modification and changes into it. The videos and the activities are HYP-based. The portfolios and the badges can be published also in Mahara. And uh, obviously, the badges come from our partners uh, in uh, from Vester. And uh, this is the technical infrastructure of the Learning Hub. And here is another video which I prepared uh, about the Hub uh, to make it easier uh, for everybody to be able to see. Let me see, is this the Learning Hub video? Hold on, how I can change, check this. Um, I quite close this. I'm sorry, apologies. I'm completely useless. I want the other video. Perfect. Um, I want to be able to put the other video, please. Can you help me? I don't know how to close this window so I can have the other video on, um, which is this, this link of the video. Um, Um, okay. So this is the learning hub. of the Open Virtual Mobility Erasmus Plus project is the Open Virtual Mobility Learning Hub. Built on a Moodle platform, the Open Virtual Mobility Learning Hub has different structures. The first one is the open online free courses, which are 24 courses which we developed during the project. But you will also be able to identify and to find all the open educational resources which we identified or developed during the project. You will learn and knew about the open virtual mobility skills and credentials, and you will be able to join the open virtual mobility market. But to be able to do this, you will need first to create an account, which you, would, you can do very easily by accessing sign up. And then you will be able to agree with our privacy policy and create a new account by answering to some compulsory fields. Once you have your account created, you will be able to see the hub and you will be able to log in. When you log in, the first information which you are going to see is some Open VM Good Practices OR, which is a course which is about the Open Educational Resources Repository, where you will be able to see and to be able to um, learn about more about the open virtual mobility. But all the courses, the open online free courses, which we called Open VM MOOCs, are in the Open VM MOOCs area, which are the courses area. And here you will be able to join directly each of the course. I will show you some of the courses. So, for example, to be able to see how you navigate into the platform. The Open Minus Intermediate Level course, you will be able to see all the time where you are, as you are seeing courses, Open VM MOOCs, Open Minus, and the Intermediate Level. 
In the right, you will be able to see the participants, the marks which you will have and the grades, a different quizzes, and also how to jump into different topics of the course. In the right, you will be able to see exactly in which course you are, and also the badge which you can earn in this course if you complete all the activities. At the beginning, all the courses have the learning objectives, the course materials, and the time to finish the course. You will be able to see also the materials, which are either directly information or videos which are taken from other open educational resources, or you will be able to join the discussion in the announcements and into an area which uh, you can discuss with other participants to the course, and you will be able to take the quizzes which uh, you will, uh, it will allow you to gain the badges. So once you complete all the activities in a course, which is reading or accessing or uh, answering to quizzes or participating in peer activities, or in uh, the group formation activity, you will be able to get the badge, which is always listed into the, into the right. There are several other courses which have several other information and um, structures, and they, are, they can have several parts which you can uh, read, and also a lot of external resources from where for further reading and also different courses and different uh, uh, videos, some of them with interactive part directly integrated into the videos. Other courses are at advanced level, so these will have more discussion forums and more questions uh, for you to answer, and it will ask you to do some outside the environment activities, like for example, to create an e-portfolio and to submit this e-portfolio. Every course is completely independent. You can do once you put this e-portfolio. Pre-assessment evaluation, and then you can join directly the course, read all the materials, the video, answer the quizzes, do the activities. At the end, you will gain the badge. You will be able to see also what sort of badges are, for example, available and how many of the users have been gaining already our badges. And you will be able to join our Open Virtual Mobility online free courses through the Open Virtual Mobility Learning Hub, which is at the hub, openvirtualmobility.eu, where you have all the courses, all the information with the calendar, with the events, and also the market and other uh, data which is available to use. Okay, perfect. So going back to the presentation now. Um, not this one. Yes, this one. And uh, directly to the open virtual mobility. Uh, at mobile application because we have also a mobile application for our <clears throat> learning hub which you can download and you can access the courses directly into into your mobile in the process of development we have been running two usability uh, processes two usability uh, reports which were run in april and in november 2019 following several um, methods of uh, usability with real users, uh, which we had. And here are some data from what happened in the Open Virtual Mobility Learning Hub into the, into the last uh, almost a year and a half. In fact, uh, we launched the Open Virtual Mobility Learning Hub in May 2019. So it's a year exactly since we gather all of this data. As you can see, a lot of people have been uh, visiting us and, and uh, accessing things from, from there. Um, obviously, during the piloting period, we had quite a lot of hits and activities. We had 90,000 activities in some of the days when uh, we were uh, doing uh, especially the piloting in all the uh, in all the universities and uh, here you can see what type of users we used to have obviously a lot of them are students who are learning <laughs> in 
how to do uh, better and open a virtual mobility to prepare themselves from, uh, for a virtual mobility. And uh, you will be able also to see that uh, they come from a variety of countries. The top is from Italy and Romania and Germany, which are the project partners into this, uh, into the OpenVM hub. And uh, we were asking them also some questions about different uh, levels of use and education. Quite a lot of them are still in the bachelor degree. So they haven't uh, gone further than, uh, they are still students, quite a lot of them. Also, they have full access to internet, which is very useful when you're doing an online course and when you're preparing for a virtual mobility. They have experience with digital tools, not very much, but still some experience on running digital tools. They are coming from the universities, which are partnered into the project, quite a lot of them, during this piloting phase. And they use quite often online education. So it's uh, these are the students and the teachers which are prepared, in fact, to take on the virtual mobilities. Uh, we've been uh, seeking also if they have some uh, uh, problems if they have if they face uh, some of this uh, situation uh, the majority of them were facing cultural differences they were coming from different backgrounds and there were even some of them foreign students studying in another country and uh, this virtual mobility was very helpful for them and especially the courses which we have we obviously have the badges when you will hear something more about that uh, later and here are my credentials if you want to contact us and also the open virtual mobility uh, .eu website where you can see everything and now i'm ready to take um, some questions I okay see thank you thank yeah. you diana i think we, we already answered the questions in the chat Okay, good. Um, Perfect. For yeah, me. And no we're, problem. Yeah. Okay. And unless you want to address something specific, but I guess we could. Uh, the only thing is that the hub is free to use. Obviously, all the courses are open, and uh, they, these are the, in fact, the courses to prepare you for a virtual mobility because you cannot, in our opinion, and also based on the research which we've done, I've been running virtual mobilities with United States, Italy, and Finland for the last since 2009 in fact 11 years from now with more than 2000 almost 2000 students which i had in virtual mobilities myself as a professor and uh, you need to be very much prepared for that and these are the courses for you to prepare you as a teacher or as a student to take on a virtual mobility thank you okay great thank you so much let's continue with the next presentation and this is going to be about competency directory our smart tool, and I hope Johannes can activate the microphone and the audio and the slides. I guess the slides are displaying now, so that's perfect. And let's see. Johannes, we still can see you. I unlocked his audio. Um, You should. Or um Fena, maybe you can help but there is a um video the icons in the, with... in the screen you should unlock uh, the two icons in your screen there it goes no. so where the video is displaying you can see below there should be visible for you I think he found it yet. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there he okay, is. Great. Cool. Okay. Is there some audio? <laughs> you can hear me? No, not yet. Oh, yeah. Okay. George, at least uh, can hear me. That's good. <laughs> at least one. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for the technical issues. These buttons are so small, I couldn't see them actually. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Welcome, um, everybody. I will present a little bit about the um, output three of the project of the open virtual mobility project it's um, honestly speaking it's about two uh, parts it's a competency directory that we connected to um, our MOOCs and the badges which I will focus on now but there's another part as well it's about the learning group formation when we have uh, peer activities in the MOOC uh, the participants are not matched by random they are matched by an algorithm to optimize their learning outcome but this is not part of that presentation now. So if you're interested in that part, read our um, published PDFs on the website. Okay, fine. 
Um, so the competency directory. So next issue for me is to find out how I can switch to the next slide. Ah, yeah, there it is. Cool. Uh, very quickly, I will um, talk about the whole dependency of the outputs. Then I will give a brief uh, summary of the output five that is coming later, but we need to have a quick look at this. Uh, and then obviously the biggest part is uh, the competency directory I will present here. So this is really only one slide about the interdependency of um, our outputs and parts of that um, project. Um, as you can see on the left side, there's the output three where the competency directory is located. And this is aligned to um, the output two that was just presented by uh, Diana, um, where we integrated um, and connected the badges of the um, virtual mobility MOOCs in that uh, uh, virtual mobility platform uh, to this um, competency directory. Why this is so great and why this is such a cool uh, feature, I will talk about later. Um, yeah, and there's output six below in green. Um, the MOOCs are issuing the uh, open badges, which uh, will be presented in detail later. And um, these are technically connected to the competency directory in the, yeah, in the background, we could say. So as you already realized, this is more a technical talk now. <laughs> um, so for everybody who has no um, uh, issues in, in technical aspects, um, I still um, encourage you to, to follow this presentation. It's not such hardcore. And it's quite interesting what is possible um, behind uh, the pictures and behind the, the visuals of um, open badges. As this is presented more in detail later on, and Diana already talked about this as well a little bit, I will only briefly give you a rough uh, impression what types of badges you can earn when you finish parts of the several MOOCs and sub -MOOCs that we offer. Um, most visible is the, um, the, the image representation of an open badge that you can download, that you can share, that you can upload, for example, in several uh, backpacks, uh, LinkedIn as well as supporting it. But there's so much more uh, behind the scenes. So when um, you look at the infrastructure behind open badges, there is not only the small uh, badge that is issued by an educational um, institution in our example. Of course, this could be any organization. Um, but in a more formal learning context, you have an educational provider or an educational organization that is issuing uh, the badge <coughs> to a recipient. And this recipient uh, then gets a so-called baked open badge. Um, this, um, this open badge then contains his uh, user ID and uh, verification URL so that everybody who gets this badge in a digital form can get back <clears throat> to the issuer and verify that really that user got this badge and that it is still valid. That is a very important part of the badges because they are with this infrastructure and with this metadata embedded into the badges. It's so much more than a simple picture or a dump PDF. Um, it allows receiving institutions, for example, where you um, where you where you submit your job application or things like that, they can more automatically or simply um, by by checking the the URLs verify that these badges really exist, and as as long as they trust the issuers, everything is fine and they can uh, yeah, build on that. You really have these competencies. Um, I will not talk about more in, in this slide. I think we directly move on and go a little bit deeper into this um, technical stuff. Um, so as I said, there is the badge. Okay, this is an off-topic question. Sorry, I was distracted by the chat questions. Uh, so there's, there's obviously not only the image of that badge. The badge uh, has, as I said, embedded metadata. And what we focused on now in the project is behind uh, creating nice visual representations is that we use the uh, since two years, a new alignment field in the Open Batch Specification Standard 2.0. That's a field that is still 
underrepresented, underrepresented if you download uh, or use uh, badges out there. But in this project here and with our very um, ambitious partner, Bester, we managed to uh, connect our badges to a semantic data so that uh, if you download an, an open badge and you, you get this badge, uh, there's really inside embedded an, a hyperlink um, to a directory that is giving information about the competencies that you presented and that you showed when you earned that badge. That is really, really a great feature that allows so much application scenarios. For example, you can compare badges for similarity. You can automatically aggregate competences users have if they, for example, got hundreds of badges and things like that are all possible. In such an alignment field, as you can see here highlighted in, in red, there is an URL that could basically be any URL that provides information about uh, the competencies. Um, in case that directory is offline, there is still some data like a name and a short description um, directly embedded into the batch. But um, when these URLs work, um, a human or a machine accessing this batch can read about these competencies and um, get an impression about what it's all about. And this is exactly the point where the competency directory comes into action. Um, Maybe you realized on the slide before that the hyperlinks are pointing to the URL cd.openvirtualmobility.eu. And this is exactly the URL of the open uh, virtual mobility competency directory that um, you can freely use and connect your badges as well to, as long as we have the proper competencies in our directory that you want to connect your badges to. Um, we limited ourselves to only um, provide the competencies and outcomes of our output one that was already presented by Olga and Kamakshi before. Of course, you can set up your own competency directories as well with our open source um, programming code and uh, import to this database whatever competencies you have. So. With uh, this directory, you can access it in several languages. Um, we are aiming for providing all competencies and the whole interface in all partner languages. The translations are already done, but it's not yet online, but will be online very soon. So when you access these uh, website URLs uh, with a browser, um, the web server detects this and presents you a nice uh, responsive uh, website where you can um, search and, and scroll and look into the details about um, several of these uh, competencies. And then you get uh, the URL either in the top of the browser or even in the, in the details page of a certain um, competency in our directory. And the beauty is that if you're accessing the same URLs um, by machine, so, for example, you have a Moodle plugin that is automatically fetching this stuff from the, from the badges or you're using Bester. Bester is doing this as well when they um, displaying the, the badges that in the background they connect to the um, Open Virtual Mobility Competency Directory. Then the directory realizes it's not a human, it's not a browser accessing the directory, it's a machine. Then it will provide uh, all this semantic metadata about the competency and send this back. Um, for technical guys, um, this is JSON-LD format, so linked data format, and um, there's a REST API interface. You can access all this data. For the others, um, simply uh, realize that there are two ways of representing the data of our database. One is the visual part with the website where you can click through, and the other is um, that you directly by machine can fetch all this data. As I said, all the other languages will be available soon at the moment. They are in English available and the semantic cross-referencing, for example, is essential skill for another skill or is optional skill for another skill, uh, related essential skills and things like that. These um, uh, keywords are similar, um, are taken from the uh, ESCO framework, so the European Skills, Competency and Occupation framework is providing um, such a semantic um, ontology, you call this, and uh, we reuse their schema so that it is easier for everybody who is using ESCO and other competency directories to merge all this together. Um, yeah, so I think my time is nearly over. 
So um, if you're interested in that, of course, you can access directly the ESCO descriptions as well of what um, what parts the skill description usually has. And then you will realize that we um, copied most of them to make reuse easy. So the skill description, usability level, uh, and things like that. So in summary, last slide, <clears throat> Um, you can find from us uh, competencies that were developed in the project um, as a semantic informational data on this competency directory. You can browse it as a user with the, yeah, as a website, and you can access it by machine readable. Um, the semantic data is cross-referencing among the skills, and we're working on referencing ESCO skills from our skills as well, so to say which skills are similar to others. And because these are unique URLs and there's JSON linked data, um, you can easily embed these URLs directly in your websites and descriptions of badges so that users can click on and see more information. Yeah, thank you very okay. much for listening. I hope audio was fine. If not, uh, just write and type me the questions and I try to reply. Okay, super. Thank you, Johannes. Um, I think there were no questions directly related to your presentation, but I'm going to display one. Uh, that was, uh, we, we tried to answer in the chat, but I think maybe Diana could answer this question as it relates to the hub. Mm, she yeah, seems no, not I'm to be back. responding. <laughs> yeah, no, because I was not uh, in presenter mode. I was at attendee. Ah, and that's why. <laughs> only type so MOOCs are not accessible set face plus not clear how to join where to register so you uh, you have a button uh, which I showed into the video and the video is also available on YouTube which is sign up here you need first to sign up to make your account which is free and then uh, you will need to take uh, the pre-assessment questionnaire which is the first one which you will need to do and immediately after that, you will be able to choose one of the courses which are available. I think at the, in the foundation level, all of them are available in a self-paced mode. You have a button which will uh, allow you to do a self-enrollment into the platform. And there is also a tutorial into the website on how to do that, if, uh, if that's helpful. So hopefully it was clear enough. And in the video, I got quite quickly, but you can stop it and then you can see exactly how it's done. Great, thank you, Diana. Okay, you. so I guess we are ready to continue with the next presentation. I'm going to switch to presentation mode and this is going to be about the e-assessment. So we have different types of e-assessment and our colleagues from France, I believe it's going to be Deborah and Gerard are going to present this part of the project. Okay, so we see the slides and I can see that video is loading. I don't know who it's going to be. I think okay, Deborah. It's going to be me. Yes. Can everybody okay. hear me? Yes, um, hi Deborah. I just need to be told. Oh, I can navigate the slides um, on, At the, the, on bottom. the right. Yes. yes, on the bottom. I think there, there's arrows. Oh, there's an the... arrow, yes. Yeah. Okay, found it. <laughs> it was switching between many different interfaces these days. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Um, so um, I'm Deborah Arnold from ONEG, the French Digital University for Business and uh, Economics or Management and Economics. And I'm going to be sharing this presentation with my colleague Gerard Casanova. So I'll go through the first part. Um, and we're going to be talking to you about the fourth output, which is the um, self-assessment tool. Uh, so we've looked at competences. We've looked at the competency directory. Um, and of course, um, working on these open virtual mobility skills, um, we need to look at the question of, um, uh, of assessment and self-assessment in particular. Uh, so um, we're going to look at the main features, the concept, the learning paths, how the self-assessment fits in um, with the actual MOOCs. And then uh, Gerard is going to give you uh, a guided tour of the e-assessment tool, uh, contextualizing it as well, showing you how that can be, uh, how it can be used. Um, so this is a little bit of pedagogy by repetition. You've seen this diagram before. Um, I'd like to focus here on output four. And as you can see, this is central um, and interlinks with all the other outputs. Uh, so we're building on the competency directory. Uh, we're using um, the e-assessment concept to develop um, 
uh, the actual um, assessment activities within the MOOCs. And that obviously links to the way the, um, the badges and credentials are delivered. Okay, so um, it's based on the framework, as I said. Um, the uh, uh, the e-assessment tool can be used by students and by teachers, teachers who want to integrate uh, these skills into um, their uh, virtual mobility offering to ensure that they're not just integrating students onto um, a distance learning course and that they're covering all these skills, particularly the intercultural aspects, um, supporting students in developing their autonomy and so on. Um, another use uh, is for, for learners to be able to choose which of the OpenVM mini MOOCs they want to focus on. Um, and finally, the tool is available in all seven languages of the project. Uh, so the, the, the tool itself and the concept, we'd already worked on um, uh, assessment and e-assessment for soft skills development in a previous Erasmus Plus project called LN for Work, um, taking the definition of, com of competence as a complex set of savoir agir, knowing how to act. It's very important that we're not just looking at um, uh, attitudes, but these are part of it, but also the way those attitudes are translated into behaviours and actions. Um, we have uh, precise, very precise definitions, which you also find in the competency directory. And then the way that we're um, uh, uh, approaching the self-assessment, uh, we chose to use a four level Likert scale rather than a five, uh, because we thought it was important to encourage learners to position themselves clearly one way or the other, um, especially as it's being used to direct people to, oh, why is it moving forward? Who's moving my slides forward? I'm still here, thank you. Um, unless it was something happening on my, with my cable. Okay, um, so the Likert scale, um, so, th so that learners are not using the easy option of being in the middle because then the, uh, uh, the results of the uh, self-assessment tool will be encouraging them to follow a particular um, pathway through the OpenVM MOOCs. And, and to learning, turning to these learning paths, um, there is a self-assessment tool for each persona or each type of uh, sub-MOOC. Um, but when this kind of uh, learning pathway is already integrated into um, uh, an institutional offer, then maybe uh, at that level, at program level, some of the sub MOOCs might be recommended. But this is also taking the whole open option that um, a particular learner can decide freely um, as well which way to go. So according to um, the different uh, sub MOOCs organized, as we've said, around the different uh, competencies, uh, there's a pre-assessment which will suggest to the, to the learner to start at foundation level, to start at intermediate level, or to go straight on to uh, advanced level. Uh, there's an assessment embedded into uh, each of those levels and on course completion that delivers results in the delivery of a badge according to the activities and, and the assessments done. And so to give you um, a more detailed picture of how this works in practice, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Gerard Casanova. Thank you. If you can, uh, I, you can see my uh, slide. Yes. Hi, Gerard. And you can hear me? Yes. Okay. Thanks, Deborah. I'm going to, to present the practical aspect of the tool and uh, a kind of uh, kind of step by step to use the tool. The self assessment tool is implemented in a model course. So to use it, you need to register to the hub and go to the OpenVM online course. 
uh, among all the course of the in the hub, you have to choose the open virtual mobility self-assessment. Um, in the tools, you will find all the, the skills of the open VM skills framework. To self-assess the skills, simply choose from the list. The list is, uh, of skills is in English, but during the evaluation, you can choose uh, another language. One of the first steps is to choose uh, your language among the seven proposed. They are English, German, French, Italian, Spanish, Dutch, Romanian. Uh, the tool has been designed for both students and higher education staff, such as teachers. So after the language, you have to choose uh, your status because uh, the questions are different uh, depending on the status. Uh, each skills, uh, each skills of the open framework is of composant, composed of uh, sub skills. And for each uh, sub skill, there are several st statements in the tool. The statements are associated with the four level liquor scales. Uh, in the liquor scale, there are two positive levels, fully agree and agree and two negative level, fully disagree and disagree. This statement describes the activities, the now, how, and the behavior associated with virtual mobility skills. These activities are written in a positive way. It means uh, if your user agrees or completely agrees, it will always mean that the competence is acquired. So, if your user thinks they are uh, able to realize all the par all of part all or part of it, then we answer positively on the liquor scales or otherwise negatively. When all the statements are uh, of the skill have been completed, you can see the result of the evaluation, which appears in the formal radar. Each branch of the radar corresponds to the skills. The radar gave a comparative picture of the strengths and weakness of each, each of the eight OpenVM project skills. According to this result, the user can choose which skills he will improve and thus choose the MOOC OpenVM he will follow in priority. But be careful, uh, all but be careful, as the evaluation are only done on a declarative mode, it cannot be used as a proof of skill acquisition. At the end of the form, the user has also has a much con more concrete knowledge of the skills useful for virtual mobility. Uh, <clears throat> it should be noted that some of these skills are also useful for classic mobility, for physical mobility, it can be used to prepare uh, an Erasmus stay abroad. We use it at University of Lorraine uh, like this. So I see it's the, already the end of my uh, time. Uh, maybe you can uh, send some question of to Deborah and me about these tools. Thank you very much for a very interesting presentation and good timing. Let's see if there are any questions. I think there are no questions at the moment, but somebody is typing, so maybe there will be and there will be one. Okay, there's one question. Let me display it. And I hope we can see it now. Is for me the question? I think so. <laughs> uh, I didn't speak about authentic international environment, but um, in the MOOC with, uh, we display, we, uh, this MOOC will be present in the next presentation. Uh, some students uh, come from different countries and uh, there I have to work together 
uh, from, for example, there were uh, Italian, Romanian, uh, French, and so student. We work in the same uh, MOOC. Okay. So that was the reference in your last slide. Okay, thank you so much, Eliane, for your question. And thank you, Gerard, for your answer. I guess there are no other questions coming, so we can move to the next presentation, I guess. I mean, in between, you can ask questions to different presentations in the chat. And uh, there's one more question, so maybe, Jara, you can answer in the in the chat to the last question, and we okay. continue with the next one. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. So now we continue with the presentation uh, on open badges, and I'm going to present with a colleague from uh, Bester, it's Chiara. So we have been working together on this output, and here's the first slide. Um, so Chiara is here, that's great. And um, th I'm going to move to the slide where you can see again our different outputs and the relationships between them. So we're going to present our work in output five. And these are open credentials and gamification. And we're actually only going to present the credentials uh, today. So it has been already mentioned, the credentials are integrated in the hub, but they are provided by Bester. Um, so, what is also special about the badges that we use in Open Virtual Mobility Hub is that we use or we have changed in the process of the project to standard 2.0, which means that we can have more metadata including, included in the badges, including, let me see, I have my pointer here so I can try it, including the endorsement feature, I hope you see the pointer, and the evidence, so we can add those different uh, new metadata fields or simply fill them out with information. Um, so in our use of open badges, we focus not on, not so much on the gamification aspect of it, but more on the credentialing of skills. So as we have seen in the first presentation, our whole project is based on the research done on the competency framework and what skills are necessary for virtual mobility. And we are kind of uh, using this framework again in, in output five, where we cre create credentials, each uh, related to one of the competency um, dimensions or of the competency clusters from this research, previous research that we did in output one. Um, so the way it works is basically we have different MOOCs, each related to a competency uh, cluster. And at the end of this MOOC, you get a batch which certifies your skill. And what is also special is that all the MOOCs in the hub have three different levels. So we have foundation level, intermediate level, and advanced level. And so uh, you can earn when you, uh, when you complete the MOOC, on the foundation level, you can earn the badge on the foundation level. If you complete the MOOC on the intermediate level, you earn the badge on the intermediate level and then for the advanced level. So you, in the end, you can have three badges or which you can, with which you can visualize your progress in skill development from foundation level to advanced level. Um, so this is the design of our badge pictures. Uh, which I basically did together with Chiara, and it's based on the uh, scheme of the color scheme of our logo. If you could look at our logo, the uh, colors are used here, and we use a special template provided by Bester to create this, so the badges have to have a spe special shape. And we have had a few iterations on how to design the badge picture to convey the information that we want. Uh, so we decided to, of course, have the name of this skill, and also the level and visualize the level with uh, one of the square, with one square, two squares, or three squares, depending on the level uh, that uh, the badge is referring to. And we have 24 different um, badges because uh, we have eight uh, skills and three levels for each, um, for each of the skills. So here on this slide, you can see uh, you can see, hopefully, when it's loading, all our all our badge pictures that we use to uh, certify to credential the skills. 
and um, yeah, they are all basically, so you have the same color, for instance, open-mindedness uh, skill has all the, um, um, per, not, not purple magenta color, for instance, and so on. So we differentiate by colors, the type of the skill, and then using the squares, the level of the skill. Um, so as shown by Diana already in the hub, when you enter the level of this of the MOOC, for example, the foundation level, you already see on the right hand side the badge that you can earn when you complete all the activities. Uh, so we uh, have we hope and we have also got the results from the evaluation saying that this element is motivating users, motivating learners to actually complete all the activities and complete the MOOC level. Um, the, the this activity of earning the badge is very motivating. And this is the display of the badges in Bester. So basically every learner can see the badges in the hub inside, but also on the public website, on Bester website, everybody of you can go uh, to the Bester website and simply put in, type in open virtual mobility, you will find the project page and you will find all the badges that we have displayed, displayed publicly on the Bester website. So it's also an interesting way for us to display badges and also attract learners to our hub because everybody, even before registering and uh, attending the MOOC can see what badges, what courses do we offer and it's all publicly available. So this was my, my part of the presentation and now I uh, hand in to Chiara. Thank you, Ilona, and, um, and everybody. I think you can hear me, if not just chat. OK. Uh, so I, I'd like, first of all, to thank all of the partners who already spoke. And everybody mentioned the badges, making my work much, much uh, easier. And, and also expressing one particular thing that I especially liked about this project, project that is that all outputs are very, very tightly interrelated and working tightly together. Uh, so as um, as Ilona expressed, I'm going back one slide. Uh, we and everybody else also a little bit mentioned. Uh, we decided to use badges on the Bester platform, which is um, provided by Chineca, uh, and instead of using what you probably all of all of you uh, are aware of, the, which is the ability of Moodle to um, produce badges itself. This decision was uh, was made because uh, we believe that the digital credentials should be a uh, property of the of the learner that gains them, and uh, they are more and more valuable as it is easier for the user to use them outside the learning experience. And since these skills that are uh, addressed uh, on the Open Virtual Mobility Hub are, we hope, useful beyond the didactic experience. The digital credentials too should be independent from uh, from the didactic tool. Also, being then outside the didactic tool helps the uh, helps the, the learners, the students understand that they are gaining something that is for them, and it is not just inside uh, the learning experience. So this is a little bit of the of the background why. Uh, these badges are, are on Bester and not uh, directly on, on the tool. Uh, and also to allow us to, uh, to try a bit of the interaction and uh, um, integrating the different platforms together and provide more functionalities. Uh, so here you can see one badge on, um, on, the Bester, on the Bester website. It's not going up, okay. Uh, each badge, uh, uh, has uh, and can have some endorsement. Unfortunately, these are not uh, yet the Open Badge 2.0 endorsements, but uh, the platform provided the ability to for endorsement well before the um, the 2.0 features. So uh, this is inside the inside the platform. While one uh, Open Badge 2.0 feature that we do uh, do use uh, uh, in a very uh, meaningful way is the one that Johannes already talked about and is the linking to skills. So we have, this is the description of a badge going a little bit into the detail of what skills are comprised into, into the badge. So what skills does 
the learner have, the learner owning this badge have. Uh, and as you see, some of those are, are links that are pointing to the competency directory. This is the human part, the human readable part of, um, of linking to skills. But as Johannes expressed and showed, and showed you directly on the JSON, uh, these, um, this connection between the badges and the competency framework, both technically and conceptually, is not only made with hyperlinks, but it is made with the uh, alignment field in uh, the badge, badge metadata, uh, thanks to the 2.0 um, standard. So you can download, if you have an OpenVM badge, you can download it and you can upload it in a different platform that might support the 2.0 standard. This is to, to prove, verify that it is standard and interoperable. In this case, I uploaded it onto Badger, which is a very, very standard and open uh, 2.0 platform. And you can see that it verifies the badge. It displays the description that has, is partly embedded in the badge and partly code from the Bester platform who has issued it. And uh, going further down the page, you will see uh, that the platform where I uploaded the badge is able to read the alignments. This uh, is produced by the platform and is showing links towards the competency directory that was shown by Johannes some minutes before. This is, um, this is one example. So this is uh, seen from the other side how the same uh, connection works. Uh, the badges, as you know, are, uh, are on Vester, but are tightly linked to the Open Volta Mobility Hub, where they can be shown, uh, and they are shown beside each, uh, each MOOC. You can see the badge, and you can see it differently if you have it or if you still need to gain it. This is uh, another example, because beyond the competency badges, which are the 24 that you have already seen, we also have a contributor badge for all of, of the colleagues and partners who uh, helped us um, in, during the project and contributed to the project somehow. And here is the way in the, in the hub where you can uh, declare what you have done to contribute to the project and get the contributor badge uh, yourself. This is the same badge seen on the Bester platform. Uh, the badges are uh, a, a very a uh, recent uh, experiment that we are doing is to activate besides the open badge also the block search format for our digital credentials. Uh, we decided to try this only for the advanced level courses. This will not substitute the, the open badges, but is an addition that will go parallelly on top of the badges. So uh, advanced uh, course earners uh, should get not only the badge, but also the block search format. We've done some interviews with experts to understand uh, how, why, and we, in which cases block search might be useful. And since we had the, the, oppor the technical opportunity to do so, we decided to, to just to try them and, uh, um, and, and see, how it, see how it goes. The badges can, uh, as you know, be uh, downloaded and used in different, um, in different platforms. Here is a sample of a badge uh, uploaded into Mahara portfolio, which is a tech part of our hub and our set of platform interrelated together. Uh, and in particular in this case, it is not the badge that is, has been, is being uploaded, but it is um, HTML snip code snippet that is provided by the Buster platform and um, is used to include and show the badge within Mahara without losing the connection with the issuing platform that is providing the verification because uh, I don't think we couldn't find a, directly, a direct way to support open badges in Mahara by, by uploading them. Uh, similarly, it works for LinkedIn too. Uh, LinkedIn partially accepts open badges at this moment, meaning that you cannot upload the badge and it won't uh, make the verification for you, as Badger will do, for example. Uh, but you can, uh, you can insert your open badge as a kind of certification and still keep the link to the issuing platform, which uh, ensures that the badge is verified. So you still have uh, much more than, uh, than you would if you, if, if you wanted to insert a certification 
some course providing a PDF, for example. Um, and I think that's it. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much, Chiara. Maybe we can answer, you can answer the questions. I think there are two directly related to badges. So I display the first one. Okay, this, uh, as mentioning also in the chat, we have uh, one badge for each skill and, uh, and level. So we have the eight skills uh, and for each of them, base, uh, foundation, intermediate and advanced. So uh, it's, I think it's not, the, uh, it's not the case that the student will have part of the skills. He will have uh, a badge for each of the skills demonstrated at uh, the appropriate level. And if he doesn't have all of them, he won't have all of the badges, but that's no problem. That's right. Okay, and one more question. Thank you, Eliane, again for your question. Uh, it's open for free use by any you can free decide to integrate this badge concept. Uh, this concept, of, of course, uh, the open badges are, are an open standard and it's absolutely, um, absolutely free to use and there is no copyright on, on the concept, I, uh, I, I guess. Of course, the specific platforms might have their different uh, policies, but the standards and the concepts, I think, correct me alone if it's different, but it's basically uh, yes. yeah, open, open. I thank you. Yeah. And also we, all the, all the resources, everything we create in the project is, um, under creative commons. So basically it's only the attribution and, um, you can use everything, adjust everything. And, um, exactly. There's no copyright, for example. I guess there are some more questions typing in, but I guess we can also answer them in the chat when they come and we can continue with the next presentation. And this is going to be our open badges MOOC. So I'm going to change to the presentation remote. And I guess we have Antonella, Francesca, Carlo, I'm not quite sure who is going to take the floor, but I see somebody is already loading the video. Hi, Francesca. Hello, good morning to everyone. I think good Antonella time. is coming. Okay. I think we were thought uh, Antonella will start and then I will present the results. Great. Let's see. So I'm not quite sure what technically happened. Uh, uh, Fena, could you support from the back? Uh, so yes, I think so. Presenters only, but now I switch back to uh, yeah, how it should be. Antonella so. cannot see herself. But Francesca, you can, we can hear you. I can okay. hear you. I hope maybe. Start and then uh, Antonella will join us. Or I think some. Okay, she's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. It. She's, so okay. sorry. So sorry. Hello, everyone. There was a switch to a mode that uh, didn't allow me to to have the camera and the mic on. But I will mm, have a brief introduction related to the to part of the work we carried out within the project, and then leave the floor. Uh, to Francesca to describe the data we collected. Also, Carlo De Medio is there and the others from the group uh, might not be there, but anyway, uh, we all contributed to, to this, uh, to this um, work we are presenting today. 
actually we have been uh, um, trying to um, deepen uh, certain uh, background aspects and uh, uh, some uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, analysis related to the effectiveness of uh, uh, the massive open online courses that were designed uh, to, to carry out uh, the project. Uh, so, um, I wanted to change slide. I don't know if the arrow is, is fine. Okay, great. So, just a few uh, hints from, from the background. Um, related to virtual mobility we didn't have actually we we don't have so much uh, research produced in the field and most of the articles of uh, uh, the researchers that we have are related to small scale studies so we really uh, found uh, and tried to cope with uh, a gap in research related to virtual mobility, which is such a hot topic, especially in this past, um, in what I really uh, want to be a post-pandemic uh, time. Uh, actually, um, other experiences uh, anyway supported the idea uh, that transfer skills in uh, virtual mobility can be enhanced uh, in virtual mobility settings can be enhanced and supported and never uh, ever as today we really need to support uh, such transverse cross-sectional uh, skills. Uh, the other point is the use of MOOCs uh, that are uh, being considered and used by different institutions around the world as uh, uh, valid internationalization uh, instruments. Uh, moreover, they can reach, as we know, uh, a wide uh, range of uh, and different kinds of, uh, of public, so uh, they uh, can be very much used. Um, what did we do through the research we are presenting today? Uh, we, uh, together with uh, the whole uh, project, uh, uh, team, uh, the project uh, partners, uh, try to um, be effective uh, with uh, our uh, courses uh, and try to, to answer the following research questions. So, to which extent students enjoyed uh, the OpenVM MOOC uh, design and its main components? So, where are we going? What is the perception of uh, uh, the MOOCs we have been developing and what is the perception of actually um, the, the, the objectives of such uh, uh, MOOCs? Are uh, these MOOCs um, uh, and are there any differences in the assessment of the eight mini MOOCs and sub MOOCs? So, what is again the perception and the idea related to assessment, uh, which is uh, uh, an area that is uh, so important and so debated, uh, especially in these last few months related to this massive going online that we have been all experiencing. Uh, does the MOOC uh, we developed support students' self-regulated learning, which is again, a central, a central aspect in the objectives of this research, but of the project uh, in, in a very wide uh, sense. Uh, our pilot phase was carried out, uh, of course, in order to understand what I was saying related to uh, the MOOC's effectiveness and its main components. Um, matching tool and group formation, e-assessment, gamification and badges, uh, learning materials, so different uh, aspects uh, related to different uh, uh, outputs uh, taken into consideration within the project. 
And of course, we try to uh, focus on the principles uh, ba at the basis of our project, that is TBR and ADI. And the data you're going to, to see in a minute are related to different uh, uh, pi pilot uh, uh, phases, a uh, pre-pilot phase, uh, which occurred in December 2018, January 2019, a first pilot phase cycle, September, December 2019, and the second pilot phase cycle in 2020. So data were collected over different times. Um, how was uh, uh, developed uh, the tool for assessment we use to collect those data? First of all, um, the participants had to express their level of agreement within a set of statements related to specific MOOC design elements on a Likert scale from one to five. And you can see the sessions here. Um, of course, the first session related to personal details, some questions related to the, the design, to the MOOC design, uh, some related to digital credentials and meaningful gamification, uh, technical aspects, of course, foundation, intermediate and advanced levels. So what we tried was also to understand and develop actually a, a, a comparison uh, among the three different levels and then questions related to the advanced uh, level of uh, a, a mini MOOC and uh, especially in uh, the open-handed area of the questionnaire uh, some uh, uh, investigation um, focused on self-regulated learning. Um, Francesca will tell you more in detail about all the different sessions and uh, especially about the comparison among the different levels. Um, and she will uh, highlight uh, especially uh, the the area related to uh, to some of the MOOCs, uh, that mini MOOCs that proved to be more successful. Uh, but uh, of course, those data are related to, to pilot phases. Uh, and uh, we can absolutely uh, learn a lot uh, from some directions that we could collect from those data in order to improve and not only improve, but have um, a vision for a sustainability uh, phase of uh, the project. Uh, as we all know, uh, these data, uh, you know, um, when you collect data, you always have to, 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 ha to be critical and to uh, reflect on the data you collected. So there's time and space for such a reflection. But I leave uh, the floor to Francesca, who will give you more details. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. I hope that you can hear me well. So uh, as anticipated, I will present the results of the uh, first cycle of pilot phase, because the second cycle is finished uh, a few weeks uh, uh, ago. I can anticipate you some information regarding also the second pilot. In the first pilot, we received 716 answers, mainly from female uh, and from uh, uh, students. Uh, we received uh, in, uh, globally more than uh, 1,300 answers uh, in, the, in total including both the first uh, cycle of pilot phase and the second cycle of pilot phase. So we managed to have uh, a, a big sample of answers. That is one of the limitations of we in the literature presented the small scale studies for uh, um, virtual mobility. Uh, in uh, here, you can see that uh, which were the uh, most attended uh, MOOC. 
27% of participants took part in active self-regulated learning MOOC, 22% in media and digital literacy MOOC, 15% uh, in open-mindedness, 14% in intercultural skills, 7% in networked learning, 6% in autonomy driven learning, and 5% in collaborative learning and open education and virtual mobility. And uh, uh, here you can see uh, the most attended course by uh, each pa all the partners involved. And you can see that in the first pilot, we had also 50, uh, 25 uh, participants that came from uh, other institutions or external institutions and this number grew a lot also in the second pilot phase and uh, here you can see the evaluation of the different features uh, of the MOOC uh, regarding the general evaluation of the MOOC we can see a quite positive um, answer from participants the average score for each MOOC is always higher than 3.5 out of 5 point we use the Likert scale from 1 to 5 so we can uh, consider this number a positive number the total average was 3.77 uh, and uh, uh, three MOOCs out of eight obtained scores uh, higher than the average, which were open-mindedness, autonomy-driven learning and intercultural skills. Regarding uh, the badge evaluation, also the badge evaluation was uh, positive. The average score was always higher than 3.5 and uh, uh, the badges uh, uh, which obtain higher score were open-mindedness, collaborative learning and autonomy-driven learning. Uh, regarding uh, and uh, gamification also was very positive. I read that Ilona told us that we have two, two minutes, so I'm trying to be very uh, fast in uh, uh, showing the results. And uh, I, maybe I can go directly to the, uh, to the summary. So uh, from a general over overview, we can conclude that four MOOCs at the moment were the most appreciated considering general features, badges, gamification, and technical features, which were collaborative learning, autonomy-driven learning, open-mindedness, and intercultural skills. I wanted to show you briefly also the results from the self-regulated learning answers. We uh, applied a thematic analysis and uh, we received uh, only a few answers at the end of the questionnaire, but they were interesting because we, we saw that the most common categories in the participants' answers were that the MOOC were helpful to improve strategy of study, uh, uh, they develop skills of self-regulated learning, they express a general enjoyment and they consider the MOOC uh, generally useful. Uh, they sometimes refer to technologies. We found also three negative comments and two comments were not uh, categorized and uh, we are going to produce uh, to support the sustainability of the project uh, open educational resources for teachers and for students regarding how to use the different tools that we included in the MOOC such as um, the e-portfolio, the peer assessment and uh, the um, uh, group formation tool. Thank you for your attention and we will be happy to answer to your questions if you have any questions. Absolutely. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you so much, Francesca and, um, and Antonella. <laughs> it was very, very fast at the end, but I just, I'm just watching the time so that we're done at, uh, at planned half past 12. Um, so let me see. I actually, we answered some questions in the chat already, but there's one I can display for you from Lorena. Maybe you want to say something. So you already wrote that basically there are different ways to participate in the MOOCs, but maybe you want to add something. Yes, uh, the foundation level is uh, always uh, accessible. For the uh, intermediate and the advanced level, we add uh, um, uh, 
specific uh, uh, time uh, windows uh, uh, that we used uh, with uh, teachers, but we are going to uh, give a spe specific kind of access in the future for teachers to monitor it, the intermediate and the advanced level. You can always access to the foundation level. They are always open. They, they, I see they're asking about the publication of the research. Actually, we, yes. will, we will let you have information about that if you, if you want, if you can contact us directly. Yes, exactly. Great. Okay, super. Thank you so much. For your presentation and let's Thank continue you, now all of you Thank you. nice to see nice you <laughs> yeah, yeah today yeah. is sunny so it's it's a nice nice yeah. lighty day <laughs> oh that's great okay and now we switch to spain to ibiza and we are going to have an, an interactive part now about sustainability because our last output output seven is sustainability output and my colleague Gemma who is also the organizer of this multiplier event. It's hopefully, okay, I can see the camera is loading. So Gemma, the floor is Hello. yours. Hello, we can hear you, we can Hello. see you. Hi. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. So as, as you were saying, yes, this is the last multiplier event. Uh, it was planned to be held um, and in the Balearic Islands, it was planned to be hosted in the Balearic Islands, but uh, and integrated in Output 7. But in uh, Output 7 has been developed uh, very closely uh, together um, the University of the Balearic Islands, the, the team from the WIP, along with the team from EADU. And so that's why in the end we decided to, to team up, to join efforts, and uh, so um, we, we decided that we could celebrate this multiplier event as a, as a joint event. Then uh, life <laughs> decided some other things for us and that's why in the end, the, eventually the, the, the format of the event has been not presential but online. So I am also now taking advantage of this opportunity to say thank you to Eaddu for the support and for making this um, so easy and so happy to, to be working with them all this time. And uh, I think they, Eaddu has done a very good job with the um, hosting the, the event. So uh, I think that, uh, well, this is the last, um, the last multiplier event, so it, it is based on uh, quality and sustainability. And I think that the last words from team uh, of Romatre has been have been uh, show the commitment that we have had in making uh, our work sustainable in time. Not only because it's a, a desire, obviously, also uh, because this is an strategy. Sorry, this is not the, the right presentation. This is the call for papers that we are presenting at a quarter past 12. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And uh, as a strategic uh, partnership, we have we have been working and uh, committed to have. Uh, we've been working a lot during this three three year period, but also we have planned and we have committed to work as much for the next five years. And so we have uh, a plan for sustainability, and this is what we want to uh, show briefly. Um, sustainability has been related to success in projects, and uh, for this reason, uh, and because we feel that the, the project has a, a lot to be successful and be useful for most of us in different contexts, um, we have addressed sustainability from three approaches, and I'm just introducing them very quickly. 
So as we have been saying all the arguments for which we have uh, um, justified the virtual mobility, uh, um, the sustainable development has a lot to do with uh, virtual mobility and with open virtual mobility as well. Um, in particular, we have been uh, very concerned about the short and long term uh, orientation. So, as you can, uh, as you will see, we have a plan for this uh, long-term orientation, and other uh, fundamental principles like uh, the the importance of the the global local orientation, the values and the ethics. And it's not only a, a question of of the current crisis, although. Obviously, it's helping us in spreading the word and that the community sees the importance on, on the topic. Um, but also, uh, we have mainly worked on a sustainable, uh, on a sustainability strategy, and we have decided to use the business model. So all of these outputs and this figure that has been recurrent during all the morning, um, uh, because I think it, uh, we, we feel and it shows the, the close relationship that we have uh, had working together and producing our common work. So all these outputs have been analyzed in terms of the sustainability elements. And um, we have a strategy and we have decided and we have looked at all the, the elements of this model in particular, the key partners, the key activities, and the key resources, um, uh, among all the others, um, that we, we have ambitions to guarantee the sustainability of the work. I'm trying to be quick. Um, we've been working in different phases, different stages, and currently we are um, uh, specifically designing the special interest group, which is chaired by Eadu and by George Wax, who have been uh, very much involved in the, in the project. So we have uh, a plan now, so uh, for the SIG, when, where, for what, how, and who will be involved. And uh, in the next presentation, you will see our one of our main important tasks, or the, uh, the the first tasks. And this is and this connects with the presentation again by uh, by um, partners of Output Six, the sustain sustainable design. Um, we've been very concerned about connecting uh, this work and these products to current frameworks so it's it feeds our uh, our realities so this is aligned with um, higher education uh, strategies open education uh, open education frameworks online learning and also it is really concerned about flexibility. So this is uh, something we were really aware and we wanted to give our products um, um, a special focus in being able to adapt to our different contexts and programs in which this could be used. So flexibility based on the micro learning design so the MOOCs have got, ha, are really structured in different levels and each levels include different artifacts. So this helps in um, monitoring the work, allowing uh, self-regulated learning, but also adapting them to the different contexts. So we've, um, we've tried uh, to give it uh, the flexible uh, a, a flexible design so uh, teachers could uh, choose the design or maybe choose a general approach or maybe use a deeper approach. And 
this is what we are now asking you and we ask for your kind uh, participation. What could be your path? Now, this is very difficult for you to answer now, but your impressions uh, are uh, interesting for us. We feel that these, these products are uh, relevant for the current context, for the current challenges that uh, higher education is facing. We feel we, uh, the work is highly integrated, interrelated, it's grounded, it's open and it's flexible but we need your opinion. So that's why it was called the, um, the workshop, because we want you, uh, if uh, it is possible, we would like to have your opinions on how, on how you think that these products that we have uh, introduced you, our work, uh, you could use. I'm now taking the time and now I'm now asking if it could be possible that you have two minutes. It's 16 past 12. If Fena maybe could uh, share, yes, the, the link. If we can have two minutes. So I'm monitoring if this, if I'm, having some answers, if not, and because time flies. If it's possible. Um, because we we feel that the the materials we have created and because they will be open have more than one answer and we mean uh, can be adapted in many different ways so how would you envision at the first sight and the first impression the reusage of our MOOC I have one answer. We have two answers. Great. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> Thank you. maybe we'll wait. Maybe we we'll wait one more minute and more yes. answers will come. Yes. Three answers. We still have 90, 90 attendees. <laughs> we could put something. We would have quite a nice information for sustainability. Yeah. United Kingdom, France, UK and Croatia. Okay, for answers so far. Yes, the, um, the survey is uh, in terms of sustainability. We see lots of learning designs in which our MOOC could be used. And we are asking for your insights, how you think you could use this material. We feel it's not only uh, uh, one way to use them. And that was the, the game. We have five answers. And um, for example, we see that um, in particular, um, participants would uh, suggest the topic and the level. So from the eight mini, the, from the eight mini MOOCs, they would choose the topic that they would ask their students and they would choose the level. And 
Um, the same two participants and two other participants. Now this is changing again. Okay. <laughs> now we have two participants that would um, use the design of teachers suggesting the level and a student suggesting the topic. And finally, three answers so far about allowing students to choose topics and levels. Um, in output one, there has been a research on skills and we've been working upon this research, the results of these skills. And uh, this means that uh, in a particular context, a skill would be um, much more needed than another or maybe uh, that uh, particular in a particular context students um, would prefer to go to uh, learn in greater detail a skill so this is what we mean about the flexibility of uh, our product and the different ways in which we could use the, um, the materials we have presented it's 20 past 12 and uh, if there are not uh, if there aren't more questions we could go to the call for papers yes let's do this let's use the last minutes for the presentation of the call for papers and i mean participants can still fill out the survey when we it should we work the i see i see a comment about uh uh, not being a, uh, it should work, but um, you you are free to answer the the survey. It's just if um, you see how you could, if you are interested in using our materials, how you think you would use or how they would fit your context. Okay, Gemma, let's continue with the call for paper. Okay. And so we are proud, we are proud to present and introduce a call for papers. Um, um, myself and Ilona <laughs> will be, will be uh, the guest editors of a new call in the, in the Spanish journal EduTech, Revista Electrónica de Tecnología Edu Educativa. This journal, it's a Spanish journal, and um, yes, the topic of the call for papers, it's virtual mobility, opening up educational mobilities. So we are, we are asking for uh, virtual mobility as the umbrella term and the open virtual mobility as the new approach that we are uh, trying to, to challenge and to, and to work on. So uh, the journal EduTech is the journal uh, that is published by EduTech, the Spanish Asso Association for the Development of the Educational Technology and New Technologies Applied to Education. It's one of the most well-known association uh, and journal in Spanish and in the Spanish and Portuguese language research world. Um, EduTech he was born back into 1993 and since 1995 is publishing the journal EduTech. Um, EduTech is the journal is um, open open access and free for subs subscription journal peer review and is one of the most established and known journals in Spain. And it is uh, it publishes results, studies, experiments, innovation. And the focus and the scope is uh, educational technology, didactic media and resources, mass media and learning and teaching processes. 
the new call um, is interested but not limited to um, case studies as we have said that uh, there exist uh, so far uh, a, kind, a number of case studies on virtual mobility but in particular also we are also uh, we are looking for the theoretical frameworks the open education background the different formats the curriculum design we are interested in the curriculum designs in the joint curriculums in the co-design curriculums by different um, partners and uh, we are also very concerned and uh, interested in uh, critical approaches, ethical issues. Could we say now that this uh, open or these virtual mobilities could be challenging the, mm, the current concept of the neoliberalism of uh, the online learning that we are living? Are we boosting cross-cultural knowledge? Are we uh, boosting uh, peripheral relationships among different countries and universities? So these are some interesting topics that this could be addressed uh, and in the articles and uh, among others, for example, the learning designs, the teacher training focus, the perceptions of students. So um, we invite you to uh, send to the journal your work. The call will be open right now. I mean, it's uh, going to be published in these coming days and the call will close in the 20th November. So you have plenty of time to prepare your work and uh, submit it to this special issue that we uh, have uh, prepared and that we are proud to present here and as one of uh, an important relevant task to begin our sustainability strategy. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Emma. <laughs> we have three more minutes to, um, to finish today. We have still uh, 83 participants. Thank you very much to all participants for staying with us until now and thank you to my colleagues from the project for presenting today for great work in the project it's our last joint event we're still going to have one partner meeting but we're almost finished and finishing the project at the end of august i hope we have all the links and also um soon we will have an announcement for the special interest group if you're interested to join us network with us we are open for collaboration so thank you to everybody and Hopefully see you soon somewhere in virtual mobility. <laughs> Thank you, Ileona, for the session. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.